Our next speaker is Grace Kalamanik. Okay, here's Grace's three statements. She lives in the same town she grew up in. She has a black belt in karate. She practiced her ignite, ignite talk on the treadmill. I don't get it. Every day when I was teaching and I gave my kids a hard math problem to think about, this is what I heard. It was a tacit request for me to explain the problem to them, or worse yet, suggest an approach. And every time I did that, which I all too often did, I robbed them of the opportunity to develop these standards for mathematical practice. I robbed them of the opportunity to think like a mathematician. So we have to develop those standards for mathematical practice. It's a daunting task. It feels like a daunting task. It feels absolutely overwhelming. There's eight of these things. There's a paragraph description of each. Where do we have the time? How do we do it? I'm going to try to give you a suggestion. First, you need to know that not all math practices are equal. They play different roles in students' mathematical thinking. Like actors in a play, some take the lead and others support that thinking. The first lead actor in our math play is Math Practice One. Make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. Without something mathematically problematic to chew on, none of the other math practices matter. They just don't even come into play. Next, focus on math practices two, seven, and eight. Why? Because two, seven, and eight define three distinct ways of thinking mathematically. Reasoning about quantities. Oh, look who's coming in. Our supporting actors. These are our supporting actors. When you're reasoning quantitatively, structurally, with repetition, you need to be thinking about tools, creating arguments, thinking about precision, and modeling with mathematics. So let's do some math. I'd like to talk you through how a student might approach this problem through each of these avenues of thinking, two, seven, and eight. If you're reasoning abstractly and quantitatively, you're paying attention to the quantities in a math problem. You're asking yourself, what can I count? What can I measure? You're looking for relationships between those quantities. When you do your work, you're digging behind the given numbers to the numbers of. You're identifying what the important quantities are, and you're looking for relationships between them. In this case, one quantity is four-fifths of another. If you're reasoning quantitatively, and you look at students' work, you may see a diagram where students are trying to actually see the quantities and how they're related. Creating a diagram can kick out uh, hidden quantities, and it can help you see a solution strategy. Second avenue of thinking, math practice seven, structure. If you're thinking structurally, you're trying to get a handle on how this situation is behaving. You're asking yourself, does this problem remind me of another one I've done before? When you work, you shift perspective. So you might look at the four-fifths full and think, hmm, that's one-fifth empty. Can I leverage that idea to find a solution approach? When you're thinking structurally, you are looking for calculation shortcuts. You're using what you know about numbers and operations to be able to calculate quickly, like this student did. The third avenue of thinking is math practice eight. The third avenue of thinking is math practice eight. The third avenue of thinking is math practice eight. The th you get it. It's noticing when a process repeats and then doing something with it. And if there is no repeating process, create the process. Try a number. Don't try a number to guess the answer. Try a number to record the calculations. Try another number. Record the calculations. See if there's some regularity in what you're doing to those numbers. And then when you find that regularity, again, leverage it to find your solution, as this student did by noticing every number they tried they ended up multiplying by five. So, big message here, 
teach the three avenues of thinking, and your students will be able to make sense of problems. They'll look for quantities. They'll think about how a situation is behaving. They'll look for something that's repeating. Teach those three avenues of thinking, and your kids will not only be able to enter mathematical problems, they'll be able to persevere through them. They'll develop problem-solving grit. They'll have options when they get stuck. They'll be able to keep working. They'll get it. So if any of you saw the title slide that asked, when does 2 plus 7 plus 8 equal 1? Wait for it. Thank you. When we're talking about the mathematical practices. Teach math practices 2, 7, and 8, and your kids will be powerful math problem solvers. Thank you.